Hello, I'm John Benderwaffles Algets, and today we're covering a topic that is monstrously overdue. So, I know that I said that we were going to cover cutscenes in this episode, but that was before I realized that I completely forgot about the topic of monsters and enemies. Yeah, that's not a lot of forethought on my part. That being said, we are now going to cover troops in this episode, and we'll get to cutscenes in the next episode. Anyways, let's get over to my computer and get at it. Okay, so we're here back in RPG Maker in our little thing. We're in our dungeon that we made a few episodes back, but that isn't going to matter right now. What we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our database. You see I already have it open on the enemies tab, but you'll find it. In MV, it's going to be over here. VX8, it's up here somewhere. Anyways, just go over here to enemies. And we are we have all of these enemies that were built in to, uh, you know, RPG Maker as a default enemies. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add one. So go down here to change maximum and just increase it by one. Or however many, depending on how many monsters it is that you want to make. Uh, just go in here. And you can name it, which we'll get to in a second because we want to sort of have an image form first. So just double click on the image space and go through and find something. Let's have, um, let's have this person. And the cool thing about enemies is you can change the hue to get some different colorations. So if you want like different variations on your enemies you can just change up the hue to have like different ones. So like if, you, if we were to say we were going to have several of these, that's rat, um, not rate. If we are going to have several rats, we could have, you know, one that's brown and then we could have like a green sickly looking rat and we could have like a purple toxic rat. You know, you could go through and all that sort of stuff. It's just like, it's a tool that makes game development a whole lot easier and a lot quicker for you guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this person a wildling. Yeah, so we're going to be fighting wildlings. Now, in here you have the stats for your enemy. This is something that you need to be thinking about um, when you're thinking about when you're defining your classes. Um, yeah. So, where were they? Oops, enemies. Depending on when you're going to be encountering the enemy really dictates what their stats are going to be. Uh, so if they're going to be super early on in the game, maybe the default things work. You know, max HP of 100, you know, they're not doing a ton of damage. They're not, they can't mitigate a lot with defense, you know, things like that. It's not going to be anything super dangerous. Now I'm going to fiddle with these a little bit just to kind of make a wildling character. This person's going to be somewhere in the area of about 135. Sure. No magic. Give him an attack of 15. Like, no defense, because it's just, you know, what it is. Magic, attack, none. Magic defense is going to be super low, even lower than defense. Their agility, though, is going to be relatively high. And their luck, a little bit higher. This is, I'm thinking, I'm imagining in my head, this is sort of like a... Uh, a rogue type character, someone who's really, really quick and is going to run in and stab you really fast and then run out. So experience and gold. These are rewards that you get from killing them. This is something that you need to be sort of, again, you need to be mindful of when you are going to be encountering these enemies. Um, a good rule of thumb is to look at what the default ones are, and that can kind of tell you, okay, well, you know, these slimes are probably the earliest game enemy that I'm supposed to really be running into, at least within the eyes of the creators of the program. So, you know, about three experience, that ain't bad. Five gold, that ain't bad. We're going to put this wildling. It's going to give us seven experience. And 13 gold. It's not always necessary to have your gold be like multiples of five or multiples of two. Sometimes you can just throw a number out there that's within like a certain you know, kind of safe range for when the enemy is going to be encountered. Dropped items. This is like if you want them to sometimes drop an item, I'm going to have them drop a potion. So, yeah, you're going to have up to three items. 
Down here you've got the attack patterns. This is where you can set uh, how often they do specific abilities. You can have them do specific things. I'm going to have them do a double attack. This is going to be kind of kind of lower down there. Conditions, you know, whatever. And you can take a look at, you know, what attack is set at. And one good thing, I've said this a couple of times, always always be looking at their little description that they have when you're hovering over something. So you can read it and you can, you know, you can sort of be figuring it out. Just read. Okay, over here we've got traits. So you got hit rate, evasion rate, what their attack element is. Their evasion rate I'm going to raise because this is a kind of quicker quicker person their attack element is physical you can you can change their elements so that they can hit with any of the elements that have been defined um so yeah um then you can put notes anything else like that anything that you want you can go through here and just change stuff up a lot of this menu stuff is stuff that you've already seen in uh your classes menu um but anyways now that we have this enemy we need to be able to set it up so that we can fight them and that's when your troops pain comes in. Now troops is your actual like places where you encounter your enemies. Um, in what sort of variations can you encounter them? So yeah, Some good stuff. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to change the maximum and add one more. And this is when it's gonna be, uh, we'll get to the naming in a second. Basically you just go through here and you add in your wildlings. So we'll have wildling and you can reposition them. Okay, I have a pair of wildlings. Yeah. And then you can click auto name and that will define or that will name your wildlings based off of what you have in there. So down here you have your battle events. This is something we're going to go into a little bit more when it comes to cutscenes. Um, you can define specific things that will happen in each time that you encounter this enemy. This is really useful for boss fights um, or like tutorial fights, uh, which is something that we're going to cover later. I'm not going to cover boss battles in this tutorial. That's going to be probably an addendum to this episode. So just be on the lookout for that. That'll be coming soon. You can change the background so that when you fight them, you have a specific graphic um, that comes up. If you look through here, there's, you know, specific ones for slimes and all this sort of stuff. Although most of them don't usually have anything defined. Uh, and so another thing you can do is the battle test, which I'm actually going to show you here. What you just go through is have all of your different actors. You can give them different gear. Get them set up at higher levels. We're going to have everyone be at level 5. And let's give them some weapons. He's going to have short sword, headgear, casual clothes, body gear. And I'm sure war guy's belt. So just go through and just kind of give people stuff. Give me a short bow. And Simon here is going to get a katana. Okay, and then just click OK. Wildling emerged. It's really loud, I apologize for that. Yeah. Well, we're having errors because of the fact that we imported the uh, program, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. Uh, but yeah, that's basically, that's enemies and troops in a nutshell within the database really quick one thing to show you is when you're if you want your enemies to appear on your map you just right click edit and over here you have your encounters pane so just double click and add in your encounter weight is sort of how often you run into them uh Five is pretty average, pretty safe. You can increase it or decrease it um, to make it more often to run into them. Uh, you do it by the entire map or specify by region ID. I'm going to cover region ID at a later date, so don't worry about that right now. 
Um, that's how you would, if you have, like, for instance, on the world map, you're going to be fighting monsters in a desert that you'll fight differently than the ones in the woods. That's, that's all dictated by the region ID. Um, but we'll get to that another time. You just click OK. And now, when we're walking around this map, we're going to run into wildlings. So just make sure that you click OK, save your game, and go ahead and test it out and have some fun fighting some monsters. And with that, this wonderful episode comes to a close. Hopefully you were able to take some of the ideas that we discussed in this video and make your own enemies to fight against that are fun and exciting to defeat. In the next video, we'll get around to the stuff we were supposed to cover in this episode, namely cutscenes. You can click on this button here to go to that video. If it isn't up yet though, that button will instead take you to my channel where you can subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment down below, or consider supporting me directly via Patreon. Link for that is in the description down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch this video here to learn how you could have a chance to win a $20 Amazon gift card in honor of my 50th video. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you next time when I fake being sick for a day and instead spend it exploring Chicago with my best friend and a pretty girl. That'll be a ton of fun.